What's good, y'all? It's your man, Sight, and today I'm gonna walk you through my technique that I use to achieve a halftime effect in the MPC. Now, this is gonna work for the MPC One, the Live, and the X in standalone mode. It's using stock plugins and just some of the stock capabilities of the machine, so you don't have to go out and buy an extra plugin. So for everybody coming over from a DAW like FL Studio or Ableton, this is gonna give you some techniques that'll give you a sound similar to the one that you would find on the Halftime or Gross Beat plugin. Once again, if you guys like this content, make sure you hit that like button below and the subscribe button to keep the channel flowing. I appreciate all the support, y'all, especially everyone who's been copping the NPC Gang merch. I really appreciate it. That helps keep the channel going. If you're looking for some positive people to connect with who are also working on NPCs, make sure to check us out on Facebook, NPC Gang. Just look us up, we'll pop right up, all right? No further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Let's get busy. All right, let's get into it. Now, the first thing that I did, I loaded up uh, kind of like a harp sound, like a plucked sound from the F9 expansion that should come with the MPC-1. Uh, it also is available now for purchase <laughs> for $39.99 from Akai. So, so you can go purchase it if you like. Really dope expansion. I would highly advise you get it. So once I loaded up the harp sound, I went into the arpeggiator. I don't remember the exact settings that I used, but I came up with an art pattern which came out like this. So it was a pretty cool ARP. Uh, I just set the octave up to three, but I did use it in conjunction with the pad perform mode. So it was a really cool pattern. I decided to keep it. And the next step over here in the track area was hit the pencil icon. And I went in there and bounced it to a sample. Once I bounced it to a sample, I went ahead and muted that track, went over to another track, and I assigned it to a program. Now what I actually did with it, as you can see on the screen, was I hit the warp button, kept the BPM sync on. The BPM was at 113 because I bounced it to a sample, so the machine already knew that. And that's the tempo that I had it on when I laid it out in the first place. As you can see, I dropped the 10 semitones and it kept the same length, of course, because I had the warp on. It just put it in a different key. And I thought that was kind of a cooler key. It was a little darker, a little more modern trap. All right. So once I had that, I knew I wanted to do some type of halftime effect. I'm going to show you two different ways we can achieve it. Now I'm going to start with the simple way. The simple way to achieve a halftime effect is to take that particular pad, hit the copy button, copy it to another pad. All right. So once I copied it to another pad, I have it here. All right, and what I'm gonna do now is hit this arrow at the top of the screen, which is the flatten pad button. Okay, now the pad is flattened. So what that means is it's no longer warping the pad, it's actually printed into it now that minus 10 semitones. So now everything's back to zero, okay? This particular one is gonna be the lower octave pad. So I'm gonna drop it another 12 semitones and that's gonna drop it a full octave. Go ahead and just trim it up just a little bit. Now it's gonna be even lower. Now it's important not to hit the warp button on this one because this is actually going to play it slower, which is what we want. We want it to play at half time. We want the last one to be our main loop and this one is gonna be the one that plays underneath it at half of the speed and at a lower octave, all right? So we're at minus 12 on this second pad playing really slow, okay? Now, we're gonna go to hit the master tab on the bottom in program edit, all right? And this simultaneous play right here, we're gonna set that to A14, which is the original pad that we had that sample on, that loop, all right? And now it's gonna play both of them at the same time.
Sounds pretty cool, right? So what you can do is you can go in and you can adjust the level in your pad mixer. Really cool. So it basically gives you the effect that you're looking for with the halftime and you can customize it if you like by going once again to program edit, go over to your filter and you can adjust the filter parameters on that one. All right, so you can get as fancy as you want with it. That's just a quick way to do it. And basically every time you hit that second pad, it's gonna play both of them. That's one way to do it, or you can take it off that sync, take it off of A14, and just sequence it in. You can put the lower octave one on track seven, put the other one on track six, and just mute it out as you want it. So you can have one high one playing for one sequence, the low one playing for a different sequence, just gives you a couple variations when you go into song mode. All right, so that's method one. Method two is kind of cool as well. It's a little bit different, but we're gonna start again with that same pad. All right, so with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple plugins that come stock with the MPC, all right? But we're not gonna add them on the actual pad, we're gonna add them in the sends, and I'll show you how to do that here. Okay, you're gonna to go to your channel mixer, go up to your top here where it says programs, and we're gonna click on returns, okay? And these are your effect returns, this is when you're doing an effects bus, and what an effects bus is is when you dial in the effect on each pad or each program, you can dial it in specifically, and the and basically the effects will sit on these these returns and will only affect things that you dial it in on. And the cool thing is you can dial multiple sounds into these effects. So it saves you a little bit of processing power on your MPC. So with this one, let's just pick return three. As you can see here, I have some effects in the top left, all right? This first one is going to be air filter gate, okay? And let me turn these other ones off so we can hear what everything is doing. Feel free to screenshot this, you know, you can pause it, kind of get the settings I have here. This setting I found here kind of does some glitchy type effects, um, and it kind of changes the uh, the filtering on it. So I'll let you hear it with it dialed in. Let's go to our pad mixer, go to send, all right, and we're going to hit send again, send again, because we want to send it to three. You see the third block, really small down in the bottom but you can see it's on the third square, all right? So let's go ahead and start dialing that up. All right, cool. So you see that gave us a little bit of panning effects and it kind of gave us a little bit of, I guess you can call it filter distortion on there. It made it sound a little grimier. Cool. So that's one part of the effect. You can put that on there. And then we're gonna go back to, now we're gonna go back to our channel mixer so you can see what the other effects I placed on there. This is the air pitch shifter. So the pitch shifter you'll see has just three settings. It has the mode, which I put on textures, the shift, which is minus 12, we dropped it an octave, okay? And that's just like we did on the second pad on the last technique, all right? So this is basically gonna pitch the entire thing down 12 semitones, which is equivalent to an octave. So we're gonna drop it an octave and it's just gonna pitch the whole thing down. And what's cool is we're gonna be able to dial this in from the send, all right? So let's hear what that sounds like. Pretty dope. <laughs> we're back in our pad mixer. Still in the sends, as you can see here. This is all going to the same return channel, which is channel number three. So we didn't have to change anything. We just right, went right back to pad. And we can dial this back. So you can barely hear it. 
or we can bring it up. So as you can hear, that's not the exact same effect. It's not actually playing the second version of it slower. It's actually playing the same loop at the same speed, but it's pitching it down 12 semitones in real time in a manner that you can adjust however you want. So I think adding those kind of glitchy effects with the filter gate really gives it a cool character and just makes it pop out in the mix. So I think that's a way to kind of beef up your ARPs and kind of help you create variations in your loop if you want to build multiple different sequences and use them for song mode later. So I hope you guys enjoyed those two techniques. I think they sound pretty cool. I'm going to start incorporating them into more beats. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you have any other recommendations for different types of effect techniques you've been trying to accomplish, also drop them in the comments section. Once again, shout out to everybody that's been supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to look to hit you with another video in a couple days. In the meantime, I hope this holds you guys over. Thanks for everything once again, y'all. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.